Alright, continuing with the setup series, part number three is going to be about suspension geometry. Yes, let's go back to the garage where we left off from part number two. Suspension geometry is relatively straightforward. There's not much changes you need to do. If anything, you know, what you see here, this is what you need to be running in all tracks, in all conditions. And uh, let's get to the technical part the theoretical part of you know how each of these works what it is and uh, you know what does it really mean you can ignore the explanation on the right there whatever if you don't understand that visually let's just demonstrate how it works all right and once again we have a little demo car over here um in general in real life and in uh, sim racing and any any racing titles right uh camber and toe is quite often mentioned what is camber all right camber is you know if you look at the car like this you know and then you look at the tire so if you have a tire perfectly straight that is zero camber all right it's fit, sitting flat on the road like this straight that that's what you get in road cars now if you look from the top and then you see the tire is slightly tilted like this all right as you'll notice mostly in race cars uh this is called negative camber where you know it's tilted uh, the top side is tilted inwards or the part that is touching the, the track is tilted outwards so this creates a negative camber when you look from the top the tires are slightly tilted so you know if you have both tires you know from the top they will be slightly bent outwards now what does it do when you have some negative camber on the car and what happens if you have positive camber in the car uh, you know the opposite and also let's see look from the top the tire is the the top part of the tire is tilted outwards uh, that's something that you don't want to have in a, even in a road car or even a race car so you can ignore about positive camber because it's never going to happen in the history of racing or maybe road cars even but we're talking about race cars and in general any kind of racing front camber when you have more negative camber all right so as you go you know as you increase the number here more negative number right so you have more negative camber what you're doing is you are tilting more and more what this does is in mid corner let's say turn three of spin again where we are right now right it's a long long right hander so what this is going to do is it's going to give you a lot more grip while you're turning there because the tire is tilted the car is turning right there's more weight you're turning right there's more weight on the outside of the car so if we have camber you know as the car turns more and more you're going to be getting more and more grip throughout a long corner that's very useful all right uh downside of having a lot of camber whether it's front or rear it's going to increase tire wear why that happens is because you know when you're straight the car is straight you know there's a portion of the tire which is the inside part of the the bottom tire right the bottom part of the tire the inside part of it which is closer to the car that is touching the ground even more so that is going to wear out a lot more than the outside part of the tire so that is going to create a lot of understeer as your tires are wearing out it can even create blisters on the inside which doesn't happen in the game but in real life it can create blistering on the inside part of the tire which can you know if it gets uncontrollable it bursts the tire or even cause you even more understeer you lose grip on the front if you have too much camber in the long run it increases your tire wear now if you have let's say minimum front camber as the game allows you this is what we generally run in the game uh, so let's just take this as the reference value what this is going to do is as you turn into turn three you know you're going to reach a point where you know the car it's turning right you're turning right the, the balance to, it's going to the left you can't see it while you're driving but you know from uh, actual cars when you go on board uh, you see them on replays even in f1 real life right just take a look on the uh, off uh, off board cameras the cars are tilted to one side you're turning right the weight shift to the left you're turning left the weight shift to the right so as the weight is shifting to the outside part of the car you know the tire will flatten right because of the camber you know it's gonna tilt and it's gonna flat but what that's gonna do is you're gonna reach a point where the tire is you know the entire surface of the tire is touching the tarmac that is gonna give you maximum grip 
but if you're applying more and more force you're trying to turn more and more you're going faster and faster you know it might tilt over you know so that's where you will lose the grip and when you lose grip that's where sometimes you notice your front is understeering so you're trying to turn more you're trying to turn more you're applying more and more right turning but the car just doesn't want to turn because there's too much uh, weight transfer going on the tire is losing grip it's not optimal anymore so what you can do is just you know dial down on the steering reduce your steering let the car come back in and then turn a bit more and more so that's how it's done in real life even in the game rear camber it's almost the same thing uh, but the effect is on the rear tires now the front as we know it's the one that is going to give you the grip on the front to turn into corners the rear on the other hand it helps mainly on corner exits or even on corner entry uh, to give you how much acceleration you need uh, how much grip you need on the acceleration now again let's just take uh, this negative one which is the minimum amount of camber you can run in the game so just maybe slightly tilted here right this is the amount of camber you have on the rear tire right uh, what's gonna happen when you brake? okay cool uh, you're breaking blah 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 you get this amount of grip what happens if you have you know just for extreme comparisons like you used to run in f121 you know we have maximum negative rear camber what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow uh the braking is gonna be slightly less efficient because you have more camber that means there's less contact patch on the tire right on the tire that is touching the track there's less contact patch that means your braking is slightly inefficient very slightly and uh, but while you're turning into corners the rear is going to be having more grip like i said when you're turning to the left you the car weight shifts to the right right so what is going to happen is the rear of your, your rear right tire is going to have more contact patch that's going to allow you to turn the car more smoothly across the corner that comes at a cost uh, when you have a lot more rear camber more rear negative camber it's gonna make the car a bit more unstable okay this is something that we don't want in this game uh, in general it doesn't work because uh, it, it creates a lot of uh, oversteer in the car it is already difficult to get down a traction get traction in this game and uh, having more negative camber it's only going to make it worse so safe side you want to be running minimum front camber and minimum rear camber like this or also called right right because you know you push all the sliders maximum to the right that's why it's called right right and then as you can see the toe is all the way to the left it's called left left so whenever someone says suspension geometry just rrll or right right left left this is what they mean all right so again when you have more negative camber on the front all right more negative camber on the front it increases your grip in longer corners all right even in a wild cornering in slow speed corners shorter corners you have more grip to go around the corners but it will reduce your braking efficiency efficiency reduce your braking efficiency let me repeat that correctly okay so what that means is when you are trying to break into a corner you probably have to brake slightly earlier or even longer uh, so that the car will stop in time for your turning but as soon as you get into the cornering phase, you'll feel like, wow, I have all the grip that I need in the world. That's front camber. Rear camber, again, it also helps with braking. When you have minimum rear camber like this, it helps slowing down the car as quickly as possible. And when you go on traction, uh, you also have more tire touching the tarmac, right? More tire on the road. So that increases the contact patch with the tire. That means you have more potential grip available from your tires to accelerate which is the thing that we need we need grip grip is everything in this game so you have your camber set up like this it's going to give you the best amount of grip on corner entry on corner exit sure this is not the fastest way around for cornering but it is the best way to go around for braking and acceleration so you want to prioritize this when you come when it comes to setting out suspension geometry turning and all that stuff you can use the suspension transmission aerodynamics and everything else to set it up it's more than enough okay now let's go to toe toe is basically now if you look from the front of the car instead not 
camber you look from the top right and you see if it's tilted or not tow you see from the front okay front of the car or the back of the car whichever now let's just say you are looking from the back of the car all right uh, let's say uh, let's just take this as a tire now you are looking at the from the rear of the car this is zero tow right it's perfectly straight if you know the Mercedes 2020 does the dual axis steering you know what I'm talking about how the tow works all right so this is let's say zero tow and then if you have positive tow which means the front is tilted outwards right the front of the tire here the front of the tire is tilted outwards this is some positive tow now if you have the other way around you know if uh, the front of the tire is pointing inwards to the car that is oh might have just turned off the led over there uh, uh right if the front of the tire is pointed inwards that is negative tow okay we'll talk about the benefits of that Positive toe, as you increase more and more positive toe, when you enter a corner, right, it's going to increase the initial turning that you get. So it's sharper on corner entry, but when you have more corner, uh, more front toe applied, it's going to get understeery on the mid corner. Why? Let me show you why. Because now you have front toe 0 0.05 like this, you know, just, just a basic value. When you have it, let's say, just, just for argument's sake, let's just put it to max, you know, for, for no reason, right? When you have this much of uh, front toe, uh, on, on the other side, it's going to be the same as well. What's going to happen as you turn into a corner, let's say Spain turn 3, you're turning in, it's going to be sharp on the entry, but the outside tire is also having a lot of toe, right? Uh, and you try to turn along the turn tree, which is a long turn, the front tire it's pointing outwards so it's going to create that understeer that dragginess it is going to drag your car towards the outside of turn three so instead of turning in efficiently it's going to drag your car around and uh, it's going to scrub the tires it's going to increase tire scrubbing which means more tire wear more tire temperature in the game in this game at least you want to be running minimum toe so 0 0.05 it's still positive toe but it's as minimum as it gets so that is all you need maybe you know if you really want to fine-tune your setup once you've done everything else come to the suspension geometry at the end play around with this see if on the corner entry you gain some time you gain some cornering entry speed and then you can carry that around without getting understeer in long corners then sure you're good to go um, now let's talk about the rear toe again it's the same thing like camber and uh, like the camber the fronts help you with the turn in and the mid corner grip that you have okay uh, you will get more turn in if you have more toe on the front more toe equals to more initial turn in but it can potentially create more understeer in longer corners you want it lower so that it reduces tire scrubbing reduces tire temperatures and reduces tire wear as a byproduct rear tire toe um well, it's the same thing, all right? So this is uh, the toe again, and uh, it's pointed outwards slightly, all right? Uh, no, sorry. Rear, when you look at the rear, uh, you know, it's usually outwards a bit. So it points to the inside of the car again, like I said just now. Uh, front toe, it's pointing outside. Uh, rear toe, it's relative to the car, it's pointing to the inside. So 0 0.02, it's pointing in, let's say, you know, just maybe this much. Okay, if you increase the rear toe, let's say we increase it just again to maximum, what you're doing is you're increasing the angle. So it's more pointed, the front of the tire pointed more towards the inside. What that's going to make the car do is it's going to create more stability on the rear. When you go into corners, it's going to be a bit understeery, but on exits, it's going to be more stable. Uh, not necessarily the best way to go in this game. What this does, the minimum in the game is, uh, it's, you know, when you enter a corner, yeah, it's stable, just enough that you need it. But as you exit a corner, it's also straighter, you know, so there's less, less scrubbing there. So there's potentially more traction for you. The, the tire is straighter, so you get a straighter exit. And uh, it doesn't affect your straight line speed too much in the game, but you can notice it if you go from minimum to maximum. So again, uh, for best corner entry, you want the toe to be, uh, you know, maximum as possible. But 
you have too much and that will create uh, understeer so leave it at minimum toe that will be perfect in all tracks uh, all conditions for the rear toe as well you want it at minimum so that your rear is free to move around i have tried actually you know some tracks but i find it difficult to get traction in slow corners try to increase it to 0 0.23 0 0.26 it helps you know to keep the car stable but uh, i have to compensate uh, other parts of the setup to get it to turn and generally it's slower so unless you are at esports level and maybe the top one percent you can find that time sure go ahead and play around with this you might find some time you might find some better balance and handling and stability in your car if that's what you need so that's about it it's not going to be any demonstration purposes uh, any demonstration out on track uh, the only way i could recommend to test this difference is uh, once you have your setup and uh, you know let's just take any uh, default setup default setup is always like this for the suspension geometry middle 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 and uh, rear toe is quite a lot the reason why uh, a lot of us you know we don't really want to use this in uh, in your custom setup is because this is very slow slow because it does not allow the car to be optimal on corner entry and mid corner and all that stuff uh, mainly because of this uh, rear toe it's it's too much there's too much rear toe on it there's too much stability that we don't need so we drop it all the way down to minimum it allows the rear to move a bit more gains you corner time uh, corner entry speed as well mid corner it might not be that stable but you have everything else in the other parts of the setup to help you with that so yeah this is the first thing you may want to change every time you make a custom setup just run this you're fine uh, customizing it like i said if you need more mid corner grip let's say at turn three you can try it little, uh, you know one click at a time and you may find it to be just perfect for you rear i wouldn't touch it because if you touch the rear you're going to make the rear a bit more unstable in that way front maybe one two clicks that's the most you will do at the high speed track like spain maybe silverstone maybe spa uh, that's the tree that i can think of that have long corners where you may need extra front camber front toe again leave it as it is the more you do the more you have it the more unstable the car becomes on entry it's sharper but more unstable all right and in mid corner it will uh, pull your car outwards which is going to create understeer and it's possibly also going to cause more tire wear rear toe keep it at minimum so that the rear is free to move around uh, allows your car to turn into corners and mid corner as well the car is not understeery uh, when you go too much it's understeery and that's what you know causes the problem in this game sometimes you do notice uh, if your car is understeery on entry and having oversteer on exit that's uh, that's a very natural handling issue in the game as well in these cars uh, because the f122 cars are the general characteristic is they have entry understeer and exit oversteer that happens if your setup does not have enough rear rotation if your rear is too stiff let's say you know increase your rotor to increase stability it's going to increase stability yes but it's going to cause entry understeer and on the exit it's going to cause oversteer because you know your car is trying to turn turn or straighten out but it's just not allowing the rear to move to regain the grip that it needs that's the story so if you find yourself having entry understeer and exit oversteer uh, possibly take a look at your suspension geometry if you're already already running right right left left like this then it's time to look at other parts of your setup there probably you need more front wing less rear wing or you have to look at the suspension which we will go into the next video so